Well, hi YouTubers! Uh, today, of course, is Saturday the 22nd of August 2020, and it's been like a two and a half day absence on my YouTube channel. Maybe it was like three days, I can't remember, right, guys. But yes, the days are getting pretty short. In fact, they're getting a little bit shorter than usual, I'd say. And you know what that means? Oh, that's just great! I believe so that one man is trapped with nowhere to go! You know what, that's probably one of the best slogans I could literally use every time when summer is completely absent or maybe when summer is not feeling like what summer is supposed to be like what happened to 2019 summer SCREW 2019! It was a bad summer for the fact there was not much hot air but this year I think it has done an extremely good job in a sense that, you know this summer is, of course, very similar to the summer of 2018, not just by climate, but also in the way I just feel like they. I think it's also very similar to the um, summer of 2017 and the summer of 2016. That was pretty much um, a trip back in time to nostalgia as I'm making this video there, but it just feels like that, yes. As I'm making this video, this channel did not appear until at least around um, 3rd of December 2018. Curse winter! Goodness me, I just don't know what to say, but I just feel so bad for making my own YouTube channel during um, the winter of 2018, December 2018, and I just feel like I just feel like I'm a Christmas, you know, sort of person on YouTube, or maybe I'm just maybe the better way I could literally just say is I just feel like I'm a loser. But anyways, I'll just stop acting a bit of a loony, I guess. And let me just go ahead and take look at some toys here. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you some toys. Uh, I've only got three to unpack, and there's one the showcase, which is of course a flip-up origami um, product. But what's very interesting is is that it's also one of the first of all flip-up toys to be considered a Generation 117 uh, toy, in a sense that. It is in fact one of the first ones I've actually made, but I'm just going to show you. Um, let me just go ahead and show you one of the flapping bird toys here. This is, I think, uh, this here. This is, of course, um, probably one of the last generation 116 uh, toys ever been made. Uh, I might be totally wrong. In fact, I'll, I'm actually going to be totally wrong because I'm still producing generation 116 um, for flap toys until at least around. Uh, Wednesday the 2nd of September, I think I might stop making these toys uh, This in that sort of generation there. Can you see the number there? Generation 116. And uh, Generation 117 is going to be um, starting... Oh, I just winked today because I just felt something that was itching on my eye though. But not with my eye, otherwise my eye will be... Well, oh my goodness me, writhing in agony. But anyways... I don't know. Uh, yes, I'm actually going to start producing flip flap toys in Generation 117 on the 2nd of September because it's, you know, summer is literally coming to an end. Okay, but this product here is literally called the Tropical African Yellow Colored Lovebird, aka Masked Lovebird. Now, what's this one here? Wild. Oh, yes, it's uh, literally parrots. In fact, I might say it again Tropical African Yellow Colored Lovebird, aka Masked. Lovebird Parrots Wild Small Flock 5 Pack. Cost about £5.99 or £6. And look at that. That's a very good illustration on how these birds should probably act day. Eh? And, um, yes, I've actually um, made these guys um, probably just before, or maybe it was after I actually created the, um, the Bayer Weavers. I might be totally wrong, but these guys, they just look Really fantastic, and um, yes, it looks so so nice. And they're all named respectively as the yellow collared lovebird because they've got that thing on the neck there. They've got this sort of collar like plumage though, and the way they're created like so. And of course, they've got brown eyes. This time, I'm just gonna unpack right to just go ahead. You know, I don't know what I'm saying here, but I'm just literally unpacking the packaging though, and just facing the packaging on the front to you guys, eh? That's the best way I could say to you guys, eh? Jeez, oh jeez, oh jeezy. Don't know what to say, but let me just go ahead and show you one of the um, yellow collared lovebirds today. Uh, it feels like recently I went to um, I went to um, Barley Hill 
uh, I think it's in, um, I can't remember what it was, but I think it's like next towards um, Dudley. I think it, that's where it is though. I think it's next to Dudley and Tipton. And I've actually been to um, a reservoir called Lodge Farm Reservoir, aka Neverton Reservoir. And um, uh, it was pretty much, uh, it was sort of hard because, uh, to be quite honest, to get access there, uh, you actually have to get towards. Uh, there's actually a little uh, parking lot. There's actually a little car park there. That is obviously next to the sailing club. There. There's actually a sailing club in that reservoir, and um, I was a bit petrified of going there. But I really want to go there because that's also another great spot to feed the birds. But I was a bit anxious and a bit concerned for the fact that if I try to feed the birds there, well. I don't know if I feel like I'm going to get confiscated or I just feel like I'm going to get fined. But anyways, hopefully of course as I'm making this video, after the trip, oh my goodness me, after the trip, um, my goodness me, i got a funny feeling that I actually feel better after I just feel like I'm not fined for just feeding the birds though. And it's actually not illegal to basically um, feed the birds though. It's actually not that the illegal, of course, though, just to feed the birds there. I initially thought it wasn't legal, eh? Okay, but anyway, so let me just show you the um, yellow coloured lovebirds. They're pretty much the same sort of design. In fact, they've got like some sort of weird styling or sparrow tail. Um, yeah, which is sort of, in fact, that's a very rare sort of tail. You normally find, um, you know, in um, starlings and sparrows, but not for parrots like lovebirds. In fact, I might try and make some parrotlets from South America. They might have shared designs like this one here, but anyways, they are of course love birds, as you can tell. Their heads, they look a bit greyish, which is a bit disappointing, but I probably, yeah, I might digress that as black, because there are some shades of grey that look very, very similar to black. But anyways, let me show you this one here. Oh my goodness, this one's got slight grey, sort of wing colours into it though. Looks like it's all sooted. So covered in grease and soot on the front of the um, lovebird, of course. And uh, once again, retains the um, red beak, brown eyes on the other side, just like what we saw on the artwork. Of two birds, two lovebirds flirting with each other, though. There's the name. That's what we all want to basically see. You know, that's the sort of legitimate thing that we all want to see on those flip flap toys, as I'm just looking at. And what's quite funny is is that, um, yes, the wing covets, I don't know if you can call that, the wing covets, um, they're literally in a different shade of green, as you can see there. Uh, I don't know why, but that's how these guys are literally made in reality, of course. So, there you go, the um, yellow-coloured lovebirds. Not much I could say, but these guys look pretty much amazing. And it's actually a very nice addition to have these um, yellow coloured lovebirds because I've got to tell you guys, it looks pretty much fantastic. And also these guys, if I remember, I think there's actually a Pokemon based on that bird and I think the bird Pokemon is called Chatot, which is called the musical note Pokemon. And it's got like, you know, a musical note sort of crest like thing on its head, which sort of reminds me of like a, um, a hybrid between a macaw. You know, a blue and gold macaw with a masked lovebird or a yellow coloured lovebird with a cockatoo or a cockatiel. And speaking of cockatiels, I only just saw two at by, oh my goodness me, I think it was called the 2x2 two two pet store at um, Into Moe Hill. I've only been there like twice or thrice. I think I, the first time I went to Moe Hill was just before Christmas of 2007. I, I can't remember. And I think, yeah, oh my goodness, it really just takes a long back, a long trip back in time. That's all I was trying to say. I actually thought I must have travelled like three years. Actually, if I'm looking back to where I am, it feels like I must have gone to Maria like four times. Is it like, I can't remember. Is it, I mean, there's once, twice, thrice. What about four rice or quatrice? I don't think that's a real word, eh? Quatrice or four rice, eh? Anyway, so let me just go ahead and just take a look at another flip flap product here. Maybe before my eyes start to blink in a very sort of very weird way. Eh? I'm just rubbing my eye. Why do I have to rub my eye though? It's just embarrassing. But anyways, 
who is of course a tropical Asian bayer weaver small sexual dimorphic roosting flock five pack which costs about eight pounds ninety five. Now what's very interesting is um I'm not sure where the twelve pack is, but I gotta tell you guys I if I remember I don't know if if that is literally um half the price of what I did. Um if you remember my previous video which was called like the Tropical Asian um, how would you say it? Toy view that I did. It was like a bit of an ultimate toy view because I've covered like, you know, various um, animals and birds from tropical Asia. And I'm literally going to my channel there because I'm just looking for the actual price. Uh, when I did the 12 pack, uh, this one here uh, might be a very interesting sort of, um, how would you say it, reboot of the 12 pack there. So that's, funnily enough, a very quick reboot there. My goodness me. I just feel like I could literally hear my brain saying 10 seconds on hearing that, eh? But anyways, I'm just gonna feel like I'm gonna go towards my video, eh? There's a bit of background noise there, there's a bit of a... Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of vehicle noise on the background there, eh? But anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at the flip up Asian Tropical, or is it called uh, Tropical Asian... Oh wait, it's called Asian Tropical Animal Theme uh, Toy Review, it's a mixed bag video. And um, if I, before I start to go ahead and unpack this, uh, the product costs about £17.50. I think it was the 12 pack I'm referring to, but this one here costs about £8.95. So that's literally um, not really half the price as what I actually uh, reviewed on the 12 pack. Once again, we've got the same artwork. Look at this. How about a kiss for clock? You've got to be checking me! <laughs> That's pretty much the same aspect, you know, that is actually very similar, that sort of artwork though, eh? I don't know why I did this for the second time, maybe it's for the fact that I've been watching all of those freaking Zelda CDI YouTube poop video cutscene um, videos I've been looking at throughout the rest of quarantine, you know, that has been so, so memorable, in fact, quarantine, or should I say, corona times this year, for me, have been literally um, highly associated in the way I do things that you guys normally don't do. Maybe all YouTube poopers often take a look at, you know, YouTube poop videos along the way there. But anyways, I'm just going to show you the, the birds and stuff like that before I start to talk in a very random way and a very unrelevant way, or an irrelevant way, I would say, of course. Anyways, here is, of course, the male uh, bio weaver, of course, as you can see. It's got a, well, he's got a dark grey head there. And um, the beak is, of course, sparrow or finch-like. And speaking of finch and sparrow-like birds, uh, I've actually seen some zebra finches that I actually saw at the pet store. And I actually saw, like, different colour mutations. There was, like, a white one. And there was also, like, a loose... Oh, I wonder what was that? Oh, oh, what was that word, eh? The cystic version of the um, zebra finches that I saw. Eh? But anyways, let me just go ahead like, on the um, bayer weaver, of course. I'm just going to get a good inspection of the bird. As you can see, it's got a very weird sort of brown line pattern on the front though, and on the back. Oops. Why do I have to feel like that this is the back? Actually, it's that section there. I initially thought that this was the back, but I'm actually still thinking, yes, this is the actual back. Yes, this is the actual true back side of the bird. Uh, anyways, he's got a brown tail, or he's got a brown and grey sort of coloured tail here. And uh, a yellow on the side. And uh, the wings, pretty much the same aspect when I did the um, the 12 pack. Here's a look at the females though. This product of all comes with like, wow. That's pretty, uh, my goodness me. That's quite noisy. Sounds like, it's, oh my goodness me, it sounds like it's shaking something. Pretty much, it does sound a little bit like a shaker or something, but but anyways, it looks sort of very nice, I would say, eh? very very nice, and looks pretty buoyant in flight, though. Uh, this female Bayer Weaver, as I can tell. Yeah, I think she thought they're sociable weavers or any other different species of weaver birds, though. But yeah, this is of course a Bayer Weaver, and I just can't help myself. Flapping this female, I just can't help flapping this girl though for the fact that my goodness me, it's so buoyant in flight though, and I better stop because I just don't want to rip this um, beautiful girl. I've got two girls and there's three males here. Oh, I just heard 
some sort of weird sound there. It sounds like the paper is starting to, um, uh, almost feels like it's starting to rip though, but anyways, it doesn't look ripped to me because there's no rip there, and I'm actually not torturing this beautiful looking finch like weaver bird, you know. You know, weaver birds, these are the sort of guys that you'd commonly associate with Africa. But these guys can also be found in India and also uh, tropical Asia. I think bayer weavers overall are not like the only um, weaver birds that can be found in tropical Asia. I might be totally wrong, but I'll go to the guys, eh? These guys look pretty cool. In fact, there's literally like three males and two females. Overall, I just said it <laughs> again. I actually said it twice, yes. Anyways, let's just move on to something a little bit more, you know, just say aquatic day. And I was about to say the word inanimate because I was just thinking about, you know, the yarks I've just made though. But let me just show you this one here first. I'm actually not going to take this one out of the packaging now. I'm not going to take out these guys though. These are like little mudkips from Pokemon. But these are, of course, cute blue swimming axolotls 5 pack. Now, uh, this part of all costs about £14.95. Now, one of the most memorable. Oh my goodness me. One of the most memorable times I've actually made these types of products before. On my whole life, just before my YouTube started, was of course back around October 2016. I could literally just imagine that pet mudkip. You know, right by my side, watching the fireworks with some mud kips on my own, you know, pet whore. You know, I could literally just imagine if I have a pet mud kip, it would either be afraid of the fireworks or might be relaxed. Of, oh, I just, listen, I've just literally just shown you my bug tooth, hey? Hey, that gum! <laughs> I don't know why, I just feel like I'm a bit like, you know, freaking. Oh my goodness me. Uh, but, anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and. Uh, yeah, just read all of the info here. It's a classics toy since October 2016. In fact, the front of the packaging there does say the word classics, as you can see. And um, yes, it has five cute blue axolotls, of course. And I think the best thing about these guys is that they are coloured in with just pencil detailings and stuff like that. There are no filtered marker pen detailings, of course. And the best thing about these guys is that they are, I would just say it, uh, they're literally um, in swimming pose. So I'm not sure if you can see the actual axolotls inside here, but I'm not going to take these guys out because this is the sort of envelope I'm trying to avoid, okay? So normally, if you remember back in December 2018, I have been um, recklessly um, using envelopes like this to unpack flip that products like this. But mind you, these envelopes are just so crap, they are no near as good as this sort of envelope here, and uh, I'm just going to show you this product here. It is, of course, a flip up origami Super Yarks Fleet Basic Small but A4 5 pack. And it costs about £14.95, same price as those mud kips. And uh, lucky enough for you guys, eh? I know you guys are going to be very disappointed uh, on just me with using just to unpack, you know, the mud kips there for the fact that, yes. This is the sort of envelope I really want to avoid now these days, and I just feel like I, I actually feel like that this is a mistake. Okay, so I just feel like maybe next time try and make a mud kip sort of product, like you know, a five pack, but just don't use this envelope, or maybe just use this envelope, okay, like I did with the yarks. Anyways, back at the packaging here, um, the eye colors are of course amber, blue, and brown. And they're based on super tight yarks. Heavily designed after them, of course, though. Very, very nice looking yarks. Yeah, very, very nice. I've just got some itchiness right at the back of me. Maybe it could be some sort of weird bed bug biting at me, though. Hope it's not going to be one of those biting bed bugs inside of me. Hopefully, it's not going to be head lice right behind me, of course. But, anyways, uh, it's perfectly used also as a marina or a port scene. Very, very nice. Yes, as we all know, it comes with five yarks. Hang on, it looks like their eyes are, oh my god, it looks like their eyes are just freaking high though, that is pretty unusual, eh? Reminds me of these um, guys out of Disney Pixar cars though, but I'm just going to go ahead and just unpack these yarks and see what they look like. Yep, these are the yarks, pretty much a very nice sort of, you know, super yacht type thing. Disappointing aspect is, is that they lack licensing info, which in a sense they might look like knockoffs, but they're not. 
Here is, of course, another blue one there. I don't know if it's like, you know, the same shade of blue on the eye colours here. In fact, I think the only difference is, is of course, the eye colours, apart from the design of the whole ship or boat. In fact, it's a yacht, okay, or a vessel. That's a much better word to describe what these guys are. Trying to be coherent here to you guys, eh? Um, this is a brown one, a brown eyed version. And uh, this one here, that's another brown eyed one here, okay? It's got some windows on the bottom here. And there's um, some windows on the top here as well, on that section, of course. And uh, last but not least, uh, an, an amber eyed version. Almost feels like when I'm looking at this sort of boat, it looks like it's hazel eyed. Behind those hazel eyes! Oops, I should have never sung. I should have never sung that song, otherwise, I'm going to get myself in, into big trouble because of DMCA and all the other copyright freaks out there, like, you know, freaking Article 13. Yeah, I remembered Article 13 for quite a long time, though, and luckily enough, Article 13, well, there's no effect here. It feels like, um, Finally, as years have gone by, I feel like I'm absolutely, absolutely happy for the way that, yes, Article 13 never happened in this country of all, eh? That's so amazing. But how am I going to access, you know, YouTube videos online, eh? Well, it's very simple. Nothing's going to be affecting my YouTube channel of all, eh? And Article 13 did not of all happen at all. I don't know if Article 13 is renamed now, maybe it's like Article 17, I can't remember guys, but anyways, let's just move on into some very brand new vehicles I've made here, okay? So if you remember my Tomash the Tank Engine and Friends videos I've made, Tomash being a ripoff of Thomas the Tank Engine mixed with Ash Ketchum from the Pokemon franchise, particularly his face, and also um, the, the, the symbol or the logo on this um, hat, of course, it's... Very particular though, but once again I've made James, yes, a ripoff of James the Red Engine here. Hey Gene James, I'm alright! Oh my goodness me, I don't know if I'm good or bad at, you know, or I don't know. I don't know if I'm good or bad, I'm doing, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine character impressions though, but anyways. Once again we've got number 5 though, strangely enough there's no detailing on the, um, the connection sections there where the tender meets towards the engine. You know, it's one of the best things, a connected tender, but this time using stickers instead of tape, because I think this one deals a lot much more better at holding that tender better than that goddamn cellar tape that I have next to me. In fact, it's actually um, right over there. And, um, looks like that, eh? It literally looks like that. It sucks, but, you know what? It used to be quite useful, though. Well, it is still useful today, though. Now, I've actually got another um, piece of railway engineering from my uh, flip-flap Tomash, the Tang Engine uh, toy range. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same sort of design of James the Red Engine from Tomash. I don't know why, but let me just show you the name here. He actually says James and not James instead of um, the usual J A M E S for James. This one is C H A I M E S. And once again, I've got the 2020 licensing info from Flip Flap, of course. I think that's what the yaks were missing from, of course, eh? But what's very interesting about this train here is, of course, the dome, of course, is actually not completely yellow. I'm not quite sure, but it's actually a bit of yellow. And it's actually a bit of white as well. This used to be like a little white dome, but overall, it's now. Uh, painted with some yellow, uh, th that mirror dome there. So it's not as great as the other Chains' uh, toys I've made, but it's certainly, uh, you know, the effort I could just lift within uh, on my whole life just making this model here. Once again, it's got the two red domes here. Okay, looks very, very nice to me, very, very nice indeed. And to be quite obviously honest here, therefore, to you guys, it looks so, so nice. And um, yes, once again, the tender, um, how do you say, back section there can open at the back. That's very, very nice, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed for a, um, a train like this. It's so, so nice indeed. But anyways, James overall is such a very good looking um, engine in the sense that, wow, 
It looks sort of nice. It's got the coal sections here on his bunker here. There's a barcode where you can scan him. But when you scan him, that's literally a different product. But anyways, that's James the Red Engine. A ripoff of James the Red Engine. Let me just go ahead and chuff him away though. Uh, all of his wheels are of course uh, glued in uh, perfectly with PVA or epoxy glue that I've just bought from freaking Poundland. It's the sort of same super glue that I often make with you know vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, runs pretty well on the carpet though. I think probably the wheels I actually have trouble with is probably the um, fourth wheel and the second wheel, maybe the third wheel, but I think it's those two wheels there because they were pretty troublesome for the fact they just couldn't run themselves quite well um, at first glance but luckily enough um, because I'm running it on, on a bed there on a piece of fabric he works well but anyways let me just move on to another piece of railway engineering this here is of course a caboose or some people call it a brake van caboose being like the North American term for these uh, pieces of rolling stock normally uh, attached to the end of a goods or a freight train Maybe a passenger, yes, a passenger train, of course, though, and uh, looks very nice. At the back, it's got a hinging door there. It would have been much more better if it was glued in, but um, yes, very, very nice. It's got the barcode that we had with chains to that engine. And also, another feature about this is that the roof on the top can actually be removed. So you can literally store things like, you know, yeah, it's probably a very nice looking um, stationary sort of case sort of thing now. Very nice piece of rolling stock there. If I turn to that section there, it's got a face, pretty much similar to those, um, I would just say, Thompson Friends characters, I literally make though, eh? Very, very nice. Uh, the other side, uh, looks like it's pretty much the same sort of artwork on each side though, and the windows on the top though, on the top section of where the caboose is, of course, it's that window there, and the other window there, this one here. Looks very, very nice, isn't it, hey guys? Very, very nice. Yeah, I've got a funny feeling, um, I love that feature, eh? Looks very, very nice, eh? Now, I think, yeah, let me just try and run this one here on my bed, though. As I'm looking here, I think, there's actually a bit of a problem on one of the wheels, though. I think, uh, I think this wheel here, actually those two wheels there are just playing up for the fact that maybe those wheels yeah, they're probably not that circular enough, but they sort of work, I, I'd say. And I don't know if the axles are, I'd just say, free rolling. Eh? They're not that, yeah, I don't know how good or bad these wheels literally just free roll here. Well, being in chains, the red engine here, I'm not sure if these wheels could free roll. I think this one here, that is top notch indeed. I think this back wheel here is pretty much a top notch sort of free wheeler. Okay, so it looks very, very nice. In a sense, whereas this one here, yeah, it's not really doing that much free wheeling, but sort of does, but not as effective as what I would expect from you know from James, the red engine, you know, the ripoff of James the red engine. Yeah, and also because it's red, I think James is gonna love this. Or shall I mean, sorry, James is gonna love this day. I think normally attach this at the front though. Guess eh? What do you think, guys? Like this is actually um pretty much perfect, though. If only we had like you know coupling systems, eh? It would have been much better. But no, we sadly haven't got them at the moment, eh? Uh, nevertheless, it's such a very nice looking uh, thing to just you know play with trains like that. That's a good combination, isn't it, uh, guys? Trains pulling a well a big red caboose. It's not really a, you know a little red caboose. It's in fact a long. Uh, now looking caboose in a sense it looks so so good I love the artwork on the, the doors and the face on the front section and at the back oh, <laughs> I've just dropped it though feels so light those vehicles though compared to your average die cast toys these guys overall they just feel pretty much light that's probably another sign that these toys are not as great as what you would obviously buy at you know at a freaking store, like if you go ahead and buy a freaking Hot Wheels car, or a Matchbox car, or any other diecast car, like those Disney Pixar cars toys, you go ahead and buy those freaking Disney stores. That's also another thing I also witnessed. Those toys are, I just say, they're pretty light. 
Now, I don't know if these call oh my goodness me, I don't know if these um, coils or rolling stock pieces are as good as the um, engines day, but once again, they're pretty much designed in a sort of a similar fashion, I would say. And, um, yeah, that's just probably about it with this caboose, other than the fact that, yes, it looks red, although it looks pretty much rushed in the way it's been painted, it still looks quite good in the way it's been designed after, you know, in the way it looks like a caboose. Well, hopefully this thing is not really a perfect rat's nest, I would say, eh? And, um, yeah, that's these guys done. And actually, just before I should actually end this video here, let me go ahead and grab um, one of the ice cream vans I actually had a look at in a previous video I did, though. And uh, it was pretty much a very nice toy, eh? And uh, it was one of the best things I could say about this ice cream van is, of course, the face. Okay? So I got that huge inspiration from um, the Cars film, the Disney Pixar's Cars film. In fact, I'm actually sort of thinking, I'm going to be making like a huge, uh, maybe a, a pretty much a, a not so big range, maybe probably like uh, a medium, maybe small, medium sort of range of vehicles that are probably designed after the Disney Pixar's uh, cars, sort of franchise uh, toys, like that ice cream van, eh? And I've actually designed, like, you know, the post mail van I've done, and I've also done the minibus. In fact, um, it's actually quite a lot. Of, in fact, there's quite a lot of video. Oh my goodness me, quite a lot of vehicles that I might probably make. Quite a lot of videos back then. I think when I did the ice cream vans, um, at first glance, I actually thought, oh, I just feel like these products are just too hard, but luckily enough for me, I've literally solved, oh my goodness me, I literally overcame my greatest fears overall, just making vehicles like that. It's probably one of the hardest ones I've ever done, you know, making my first simple toy vehicles ever. But I've got to tell you guys, eh, this ice cream van here is probably one of the best, not only for the fact it's designed after, you know, a Disney Pixar's Cars character, a random one, of course, but it also has characters like, you know, Link, you know, CDR Link from, you know, Legend of Zelda, uh, Mario from Hotel Mario, and then you've got the birds from Thailand 2020, and those ones at the front are also from Thailand 2020, but you've also got, like, you know, Pikachu and your gun knuckles. That's very nice indeed. Very, very nice sort of um, ice cream van, I believe. Maybe I can make another one in the future, <laughs> I guess, eh? And, um, yes, I just feel like I must have been watching a lot of the, uh, random content from, you know, Disney Pixar's Cars, and also a bit of plain stuff as well. That's pretty much a forgettable spin-off of Cars, but I've got to tell you guys, eh, um, it's actually been quite amazing just designing those, eh? Very, very nice. Maybe I should probably, like, you know, come up with some few ideas. Maybe just a tiny, teeny weeny uh, range of ideas and just... Maybe expand into something a lot much more bigger, like, you know, like, you know, I can't remember, like, I could just, it feels like, my goodness me, when I watched the Cars movie, man, that was pretty old, and I gotta tell you guys, say, you know, one of the best things about making these vehicles, say, is, overall, as I said earlier, is the face, and one of my strongest points is I would literally say about the face, uh, which obviously looks like that, very similar in the way I actually do look at the car stuff, you know, from Disney, Pixar, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it really does have that huge characteristic uh, sort of uh, thing inside or outside, as you can see it there. Uh, one, of the, one of the best things about these types of vehicles that I've been making, of course, is... And one of the best things about eyes on the wheel, and, you know, one of the best things about putting eyes on the wheel and uh, shield is, is that um, whenever you put eyes on the windows or the windscreen or the windshield, is that it gives it a lot more character because if you put it on the yeah, oh my goodness me on the eye headlights though, um, doesn't really work for the fact that yes, if the eyes are on the windshields, yep, they look pretty much human like, but if their eyes were on their headlights, well. They sort of look snake-like. Well, I've got to tell you guys, eh, this is pretty amazing. I feel like I might be designing quite a few cars, I guess, eh? Because I don't know how long will my interest of Disney Pixar's cars would literally um, last for. Well, that's pretty much I could literally just say in this video, eh? And finally, the heat is gone, but yes, I feel like I'm starting to miss summer. A lot though, because of the holidays, I'm just going to be spending throughout the rest of August 2020. 
And I've got to tell you guys, say, COVID-19 has made a very, uh, very, very rapid sort of impact on my life today. In fact, it has actually changed my life so, so far, you know, going straight forward from being, you know, rowdy about the weather, like, you know, Oh, that's just great! I've at least got that warm energy strap with nowhere to go! That slogan, or that motto, or that catchphrase will be back again once September arrives. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, hey, oh my goodness me, click on the subscribe button. If you, of course, are a very brand new YouTuber, or if you're, of course, as I said earlier, just now, new to the channel, and be sure to give this video a like as well. It's probably one of the best things I could literally say in this video. And what's quite strange is, I must have reversed the whole, please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel thing on my YouTube channel. But anyways, I think that's just about it in my video, eh? As always, thanks for watching and bye for now. Let's just hope summer rules the roost. Bye.